Hello viewers and uh, welcome to my channel. Uh, today's topic is pneumococcal meningitis. Uh, but before starting, I would like to request you to like, subscribe and share these videos to support this channel. And if you need more information about any disease or any medical condition, uh, you can visit my website which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com. Now come to the topic, what is pneumococcal meningitis? You know, meningitis is an infection and the inflammation of the meninges and uh, meninges are the membranes uh, that cover your spinal cord and your brain. And uh, meningitis can be caused by bacteria, it can be caused by uh, viruses, it can be caused by parasites, it can be caused by fungi. So the most forms of the men meningitis are viral. And uh, the pneumococcal meningitis is a bacterial form of meningitis and it's a serious disease that can cause death even with proper treatment. So it's an emergency. And you should see your doctor right away if you suspect you may have pneumococcal meningitis. Uh, you know, when this bacteria spreads to the meninges or uh, uh, its surroundings, uh, fluids, you know, this infection is very dangerous. And even with the speedy diagnosis and treatment, one in five people will develop this condition, they will die. Uh, the next thing about the symptoms. You know, the people typically develop the symptoms one to three days after they are exposed to the bacteria. And in some cases, the symptoms may develop sooner or maybe later than that. And the symptoms uh, uh, usually come on rapidly and an infected person may develop chest pain, he may develop chills, confusion, cough, high fever, uh, vomiting and weakness, or headache and cough. And other possible symptoms may include agitation, may include irritability, rapid breathing and stiff neck. And in, in infants, uh, the soft spot on the head, which is called as the fontanel, uh, they may bulge uh, outward. Uh, the pneumococcal meningitis can occur when the streptococcus pneumonia bacteria invade the bloodstream, cross the blood brain barrier and multiply within the fluid surrounding the spine and the brain. And uh, these bacteria don't always cause meningitis. More commonly they may cause uh, other illnesses such as uh, like uh, ear infections, maybe pneumonia, maybe sinus infections and the bacteria. Um, uh, which is uh, uh, bacteremia, in fact, which is uh, the blood infection, you know. Uh, you know, the pneumococcal meningitis is transmitted from one person to another person. And uh, the bacteria are spread through direct contact with the tiny droplets from the infected person's mouth, from the throat or uh, nose maybe. Uh, the example is like if someone with the infection coughs and sneezes near you, you may contact this disease. And you can also contact, uh, contract uh, the disease from an infection, uh, like uh, from an infected person by like uh, direct contact, like sharing anything that comes in contact with the mouth such as cough or maybe uh, fork or straws or lipsticks or maybe secret, etc. You know, And about 40% of the population may carry streptococcus pneumonia. So in most of the, these people, the bacteria are dormant, which means uh, they are not actively growing and replicating, but the bacteria can transmit even when it's dormant. So living in the places where the large groups of the people tend to live, such as uh, uh, dormitories, they can increase the risk of infection. Now, pneumococcal meningitis is generally diagnosed through the spinal tap. And uh, the spinal tap involves your doctor collecting a sample of the fluid in your spine. So by testing this fluid, your doctor can figure out whether you have the pneumococcal meningitis or not. And your doctor will also perform a physical examination when trying to figure out if you have the pneumococcal meningitis. And the signs and the symptoms that uh, point towards this condition include 
uh, faster heart rate, fever, stiff neck, and vomiting. Uh, once diagnosed, then the treatment options, uh, you will immediately start the treatment and you need to be admitted to the hospital and then you will be treated with the antibiotics. Uh, uh, ceftriaxin is an antibiotic that's commonly used to treat the condition and it's not the only option. Uh, it's often used along with the other antibiotics and other possible antibiotics for the bacterial manager to include uh, venomycin, uh, ampicillin, um, uh, ceftriaxin or uh, uh, like uh, uh, chloramphenicol or maybe penicillin, you know, or so maybe combination. So this is a serious condition. Uh, it requires immediate treatment and even with the proper treatment, one in five people will die. So it's a serious medical condition. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you need more information about any disease, any medical condition, you can visit my website, which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com. And please do not forget to like, subscribe, and share these videos to support this channel. Thank you and goodbye.